Hello, welcome to this series on making Yarslow. Now, soldering, many people consider this to be something of a dark art, including me. But with a bit of practice, uh, you soon find yourself capable of carrying out basic soldering activities good enough for your average layout. And today, what we're gonna do is to look at soldering two wires to a switch, a kind of basic place to start. Uh, we won't end up soldering up brass engine kits, fear not. This is purely and simply how to get your layout up and running. So here are the tools we're going to use today, starting with my faithful Antex 30 watt soldering iron. I'm going to use some flux, talked about this in the last video. This is synthetic flux, had this forever, but it lasts forever, so that's okay. And I'm going to use this stuff. This is lead-free solder. Now I've had some feedback on lead-free solder. I've had people saying to me, don't use lead-free solder. It's nasty stuff. Let me tell you that I can only share my experiences. And that is that with my Antex 30 watt and the flux that I use, this solder works absolutely fine. I've tried to, to um, get a decent photo here of what it says on this so you can see what's in this stuff but it's lead-free solder. I bought this from a model railway show, a stand selling tools, electrics and soldering and the like. So go along to, um, rather than buying it online, I would suggest go to a show, go to a shop, have a chat with uh, the guy behind the counter, tell him what iron you're using and get him to advise you. But for me, this stuff works just fine. So let's get into it. Here we go. Here's the job today. We've got um, a simple on off switch this is what we're going to work with today nothing fancy here and I'm going to solder two wires to it one orange wire and one blue wire so the first thing we're going to need to do is to prep the ends Let's snip the end off so that we can actually get to the metal inside the wire now this is my weapon of choice I call this the dinosaur, it just looks like a dinosaur. I'm taking about 5mm off the end, no more than 5mm, that's absolutely fine. Do the blue one as well. And then what I'm going to do is to just twist the ends, make them all nice and tidy. And that preps the wires. You can just see them there and the switch is all nice and clean and we're good to go. So the first thing we're going to do is called tinning. We're going to put some solder on the end of each of the bits. And I'm using an old bit of card here just to apply a very very small bit of my solder paste onto each of the two terminals of the switch. You can just about see there not good on the old iPhone but you can just about see that I've got a little bit of paste and then with my iron which is nice and hot clean the tip on your wet sponge and then uh, I'm gonna just put a, a small amount of solder on the end of my iron about the size of a very small pea nothing anymore and I'm just going to hold that on the, each of the terminals of the switches just for a count of two. So one, two, done. A little bit more solder. I'll do the other one. One, two, and I'm done. Okay, that's all I'm doing. Just make sure that first one's all right. You can see now we've got some solder on each of the two terminals. And I'm going to do the same on the wire. I'm going to tin the wire. So I'm just dipping it in the paste. That's what I do. A little bit of solder. Touch the end of the wire and you'll see it all goes shiny. And that's then tinned. So I've now got solder on the switch and solder on each of the two ends of the wire that I'm going to use. And in effect the next job is simply to solder the soldered wire to the soldered switch. Quite simple. Okay. So here's all my bits. Two soldered wire, two tinned wires, and a tinned switch ready to go. 
So here we go. Now we're going to solder the bits together. I'm using my helping hands here. I have said in the past I'm not a great fan, but I thought it would help today just to show you what I'm doing. So a little bit of solder on the tip of the iron. And I'm going to add a little bit more paste, solder and paste flux to the end of the wires. It just helps the solder to flow. And then hold the two components together. They must be touching. You're not going to solder anything if there's air between them. So get yourself in a comfortable position, make sure they're touching and apply the heat, one, two, and you're done. And then hold it for a further count of two while the solder goes dull. You can see it go dull. Now I've turned the switch over and I'm going to do the orange wire exactly the same. One, two, bring the heat away, make sure it's there, there we go, it's gone dull and I am done. There you go. Now we've talked about testing and making sure that your soldering works. So what I'm going to use is my test wand that I mentioned in the first video. Uh, this is a simple device. Put the ends together. And that's what you get. So what I'm going to do is just to hold the two ends of my wire on each of the tips of my test wand and hopefully I shall get a noise. And that's absolutely fine. So now we're going to use a stuff called heat shrink. It comes on a very long tube and I've cut off two half inch bits this is three millimeter heat shrink and either if you've got a continuous piece of wire you can feed it over the end before you start soldering or if you've got short bits like this add it on afterwards but whatever you do if you've got it on the wire while you're soldering keep it well away from where you're soldering because funnily enough heat makes it shrink that's why it's called heat shrink but you push it up over the terminals give you a bit of insulation there we are and then what you need to do is to heat it up and it will shrink and grip the wire and not fall off. And you've got two options for doing this. You can either use your soldering iron, which is what I'm going to do here. Don't touch the heat shrink, just hold it very close to the tip of the soldering iron and you'll begin to see it shrink and grip the wire. And you create this extra insulation around your solder joint. Alternatively, you can use one of these. This is a heat shrink gun. It blows out very hot air. Don't put your hand in front of it. It'll hurt. And there you have the finished article a switch with two wires connected to it suitably heat shrunk protected and you're good to go uh, have a practice do that lots cut the uh, wires off solder them on again cut them off solder them on again make sure to clean your tips of your switch every time you do it um, and now you can solder and you can make yourself a control panel and all sorts of other bits now we're going to take this a stage further next time and we're going to start soldering wires to track. So I'll see you soon.